Adventures in Murfreesboro is produced in cooperation with Murfreesboro City Schools. Fall is definitely in the air, isn't it? I see you're all ready for fall. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I think it may be my favorite time of year. Well, it looks great for our guest. Hey, speaking of our guest, who is our guest today? Oh, uh, it's over there on that piece of paper. Okay. okay. Okay, let's see. It says today's guest is a guy named Shane McFarland. What? Oh, Shane McFarland. Oh, I like that name. Is it Irish or is it Scottish? I'm not sure, Murph. But you know, many people, known as Scotch-Irish, settled in the East Tennessee Mountains in the 1770s. Oh, wow, that's cool. Uh, what does Mr. Shane McFarland do? Uh, it says here that he's a mayor. Uh, a mayor? <laughs> what about a Juner or a Juliar? Hmm. Uh, Murph? You know, isn't it just a little bit late to meet somebody who is a mayor? I mean, it's October. Shouldn't he be an october -er? Murph? Do you know what a mayor is? Oh, yeah. A mayor is someone who celebrates the month of May, right? You know, you know I mean, May is nice, it's warm, and, and it's got fireflies and flowers, but, you know, October is great, too. That's true. I love all the fall colors and the pumpkins and the hayrides that we have here. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Murph, in the southern hemisphere, October is spring and not fall. Say what? That's right. I got an idea. Let's get Googlette to explain it to you. Hey, Googlette. Oh, bonjour, Jean. Bonjour, Meuf. How are you today? Oh, hello, Googlette. We are fine, thank you. Hey, hey, can you help us? John just told me that while it is autumn here, in the northern hemisphere, in the southern hemisphere, it's spring. What is the southern hemisphere, and why is it spring here when it's fall there? What is a hemisphere? Well, halfway between the South Pole and the North Pole is an invisible line called the equator. It's the divider line between the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. Equinoxes are opposite on either side of the equator. So, the fall equinox in the Northern Hemisphere is the spring equinox in the Southern Hemisphere, and vice versa. Is that all you need, mes amis? Oh, well, thanks, Googlette. That was perfect. So, John, mm -hmm. if Shane McFarlane is a mayor here when it's October and it's autumn, that means that in the Southern Hemisphere, it's spring. You know, it's all very confusing, but I will explain it all to him when he gets here. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. Oh, and I think you're going to have your chance to explain it to him real soon because that was the bell. Oh, good. Okay. You know, the bell always sounds different to me, does it, to you two? Hi, I'm John, the producer, and this is Murph, the star of the show. Hi, John. Hi, Murph. Oh, oh, hi there, Mr. Shane. How are you? I'm doing great today. It's exciting to be here with you. I've always wanted to meet you. Oh, thank you. You know, we're so glad you're here in this beautiful autumn month of October. October? Yeah. You noticed that I said it was 
October. I did. It is October. Yeah, yeah. And since we are in the Northern Hemisphere, October is in the autumn. That's right, Murph. I, I think you're right. You, you know, there are many wonderful things about October. There are. You know, Mr. Shane, I just thought I'd better explain it all to you because I want you to appreciate October, too. I mean, there's something special about each of the months, right? You're right. Every month, there's all, something special each and every month. That's right. And, and just because you might like May doesn't mean you can't like October, too. I do like October. Why did you think I didn't like it? Well, because you are a mayor. Well, that's right, Murph. I am, I am a mayor. Murph, you do know what a mayor is, don't you? Oh, sure. Someone that really, 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 really likes the month of May. Well, I, I do like the month of May, but there's also different things that, uh, that a mayor does besides like the month of May. What exactly is a mayor then, Mr. Shane? Well, Murph, the, the mayor does lots of different things, but uh, one thing that the mayor does is help run the, run the city. Oh, you mean you're the mayor of this town? Yes, I'm, I'm the mayor of Murfreesboro. Oh, what, well, tell us more about what a mayor does. Well, the mayor gets to do all kinds of cool things. I mean, just last week I was in four or five different schools reading to kids. <laughs> I get to do all kinds of fun things. I get to meet different police officers and firefighters. I got to ride in the new fire trucks. Oh, 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 you got to ride in the new fire trucks? I wonder if they're going to let me. You know, I rode in a fire truck once. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, they were awesome to meet. Did you get to honk the horn? Oh, yeah, I got to honk the horn, and I, I got to try on the costume. Well, it's not called a costume, it's a uniform. That's right. Did you know that the firefighters have to stay awake pretty much all the time when they're working? While we're sleeping and we're getting our, our rest, there's always people in Murfreesboro that are helping protect us. Firefighters, police officers, all those people are helping make sure that we can go to sleep and be safe and our city's a safe place to live. So, so you, you talk to the policemen and the firefighters and, and you go and read in schools and, and you help at the schools? Oh, this sounds like a good job being mayor. It's a fun job. It's something new every day. We, we even got, about three weeks ago, I got to go out to the new school that, that was built out at Overall Creek. Oh, I went and saw that school. We had it on the show here. You did? Yeah, yeah, and we got to see some of the great things they have there. They're going to have a classroom right out there by the creek. Well, can I tell you a secret? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like bunnies more than I like otters. Oh, <laughs> hey, I'm liking this kind of mayor right here. Yeah, I'm glad you like bunnies. Yeah, because they're, they're mascot. They're the otters. I know, I know, yeah. We otter have a bunny, don't you think? That's right. We otter have a bunny. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, you know, Mayor Shane, we ask our guests questions submitted from kids in the city schools. Would you like to answer some? Oh, I would love that. So, are you ready for the first question? I am ready. What is the very best part of being a mayor? There's not just one part, but I will tell you the thing that I like the most. Okay, okay. I really like being able to show people how much I care about Murfreesboro and what a great place Murfreesboro is to live. So, as mayor, not only do you help with different things, but you're really the spokesperson for Murfreesboro to be able to say, this is what's special about our community. And that's an easy job because there are so many cool and exciting things that happen in, in Murfreesboro. Right. Oh, there sure are. Hey, did you grow up here in Murfreesboro? I did not. I am from uh, about an hour, 15 minutes away. I grew up in a small little town called Mon Eagle. Mon Eagle. Up on the mountain. Up that's right. Do you like to climb mountains? I do. I, I, you know, one of the things that I, that I really enjoy is being active. So <laughs> well, I ride bicycles. Oh, yeah. Uh, we mountain bike. Oh, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We run. Oh, run, run. You know, I can run. I, I can't outrun you. Oh, no, 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 no. Nobody can. <laughs> I know. It, 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 that's why you're even better than an otter, Murph. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm liking this guy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And so, and what brought you to Murph? I came uh, with my twin brother to go to MTSU. That, wow. was, that was back in the early 90s, back when Murfreesboro was half the size that it is right now. Oh, yeah. Our town has really grown. It has, just like bunnies grow. Just like bunnies. Yeah, I've got a real big family. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Um, next question. What did you study when you were in school at MTSU? I studied accounting. Accounting? Yes. I have always enjoyed math, so I was... Uh, an accounting major and learned how to count really well. Oh, well, you want to count with us? We always like to count because the kids out there have to learn to count. Oh, I would I, love that. Yeah, you want to hear me count? Yes. One, two, eleven, seven. <laughs>
Well, <laughs> was that good? That was pretty good. Now, you left off a few in oh, there, but oh, hey, oh. We, it's always something for us to work on. I'll tell you what, you start and we'll count to ten. Okay. You, you do the first one. One. Um, two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Uh, eight. Nine. Ten! Yes! Yay! Way to go! Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor Shane. I, ha oh. I have a little boy that's two. And when he walks up and down stairs, he will count the stairs. Oh, But really? sometimes you'll hear him go one, uh -huh. two, uh -huh. ten. Ten. <laughs> yeah, he's a lot like me. He counts uh, like me. Me doesn't? too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next question. What is the hardest part of being mayor? You know, this is, I get asked this question all the time. Uh -huh. And I was just telling some kids this on Friday when I was reading the school. It's tough being a leader. Um, it's easy to be able to go along, say if you're in a group and you're going along, say you're with your bunny friends and right. something's happening and it's and you know it's not the right thing to do. Oh, yeah. It's easy just to go along with that group. Sometimes the toughest part is, is being able to stand out and say, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's something we should do. Or say, for instance, Murph, if you're on the playground uh -huh. and you see someone that's not treating someone nice. Oh, I don't like that. They don't no, like that at all. No, but it's okay to be able to say, hey, let's don't do that. Let's, uh, let's, let's treat everybody, everyone the right way. And oh. that's, that's what you want to do as a leader. Oh, I like that. That's so important. Thank you so much for talking to us about that. Oh, well, thank you. If you could meet any person in history, who would you like to meet? Abraham Lincoln. Why Abraham Lincoln? Because he was a leader. Yeah. And, and back when he was president, there were so many tough things that he had to work on. Uh -huh. And you, you'll always hear the saying, stay the course. Right. And he knew what he was supposed to do. He knew why he was supposed to do it. And he never stopped. Even when it seemed like the odds were against him, he stayed the course and he worked and he trained to, to get to where he wanted to go. Well, okay, Mr. Shane, besides being mayor, do you have another job? I do, Murph. Mayor is a part-time position. Oh. Uh, so we are lucky that we have great city staff that they run all the day-to-day -day things in the city, but I actually have the coolest job, in, in my opinion, I'm a builder. A builder? Yeah, I get to build things like your burrow. I, I, I may would do a burrow sometimes. Oh, that would be awesome. Oh, a build a burrow. It's a build a bear, build a burrow. I like that. Yeah, it is. yeah. Oh, and, and, and what kind of things do you build? We build lots of cool things. Um, we've done restaurants. We've oh. done doctor's offices. Uh -huh. uh, we build houses. So oh. we, we build all kinds of cool things. Oh, that's cool. Okay, what do you do for fun, Mayor Shane? I have three kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he stays busy. I do. So I get to, uh, I coach coach baseball and I go to a lot of soccer games. <laughs> and so I, I uh, for fun, I spend a lot of time with my family. I really enjoy that. I want to say hi to your kids. You want to turn to the camera and say hi? Sure, sure. Hey, y'all. Hey. Hi, hey, guys. Hey, guys. Okay, okay. Yeah, so they like to play baseball and soccer and all that, huh? Uh, they do. Okay, okay. What was your favorite book when you were a kid? My favorite book was To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, ooh, To Kill a Mockingbird. That's not nice to kill mockingbirds. No, no, and that was no. one of the whole points of the book, but it was a phenomenal book. Okay, you know, you have been such a great guest, and we are almost all finished with our questions, but we have just two more. Murph, I want to stay here all day. This, oh, this good, is, good, good, good. This is the funnest thing I've got to do, being mayor. <laughs> Hey, did, you, did you know that one of the reasons I ran and wanted to be mayor is because I wanted to meet Murphy? Oh, oh, did you hear that, John? I heard. Yeah, get it, get it in writing. We want it in writing. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, we'll get, we'll, Murphy, we'll get you a proclamation prepared to make <gasps> Murph Day in the Borough. Oh, Murph Day in the Borough. Oh, that would be so cool. Oh, thanks, Mr. Mayor Shane. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, here we go. Now, tell us something about yourself that would surprise us. I am a twin. <gasps> a twin? Yeah, I have an identical twin brother named Sean. Really? Hey, Shane and Sean. Yeah, and then I have twin boys, <gasps> too. <gasps> so many twins. I know. That, that is so cool. That is so cool. Yeah, so not many people know it's, it's, it's pretty uncommon to be a twin and have twins. Be a twin and have twins. Yeah. All right, last question. Okay, I'm ready. Can anybody grow up to do what you do? Of course. Yes, and one of the things I was telling the kids that I talked to on Friday, uh -huh. I'm like, 
all you guys that are out there, you may be the next mayor. You oh. may be the next president of the United States. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's what I was telling them. But I said, there's one thing that you have to make sure and do. What's that? You have to listen. Listen. You have to make sure and listen to your teachers, uh -huh. listen to your parents, uh -huh. all those people who are who have all this information that they've learned over the years. You want to make sure and listen to that, that information and it helps you get smarter, it helps you understand more, and then one of these days, you can be mayor, you can even be president. Oh, that's so cool. You know, I've got really big ears for listening. Hey, sometimes it's better for us to, to have, have bigger ears and smaller mouths. That way we, <laughs> we listen more than we talk. Listen more than we talk. I like that. Oh, you have been such an awesome guest, Mayor Shane McFarlane. And, oh, I meant to ask you, are you Scotch or Irish or any of that? I am Irish. Irish. Ah, top of them, top of the morning to top you, laddie. Top of the morning there, Murph. Yeah, yeah. You know what we say around here? What's that? To the very special guest, we say, you the bunny. You the bunny. Ah, oh, the bunny. I'm the bunny. I'm the bunny. I'm the bunny. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Oh, wow. Mayor Shane was an awesome guest. He sure was, Murph. You know, it was fun meeting him and learning about leadership. And I know where there's some awesome kids learning about leadership. Really? Kids learning to be leaders? Oh, where, 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 where? Can we go see them? I want to see them. Can you want to see them? We sure can, Murph. They're at Mitchell Nelson. It's now a leader in me school. Oh, I can't wait to hear more about it. Hey, you guys come too. Happy number one. Be Jaya Simone. Oh, Jaya Simone is a pretty name. So what are you going to tell us about? The first habit is be proactive. You're in charge. Make your own sunshine. If something doesn't go your, something doesn't go your way, you can still be happy. <laughs> that is so smart. Hi, everybody. I'm here with my friend Shelby. Hi, Shelby. Hi. What are you going to tell me about? I'm going to tell you about habit number two. Begin with the end in mind. Have a plan. Habit number two, begin with the end in mind and have a plan. Okay, tell me. I want to get better at writing, so I'm going to practice every day. You want to get better at writing? Would you like to write about bunnies? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and I like that plan. You're going to practice every day. Perfect. Hi there, dude. What's your name? Elijah. Oh, Elijah's a great name. So what are you going to tell me about today? Um, the third habit. Well, okay, tell us about the third habit. Um, the third habit is put first things first, work first, then play, do your homework first, then go outside and play. Can you tell us about a time you did that, Elijah? I cleaned up my toys in the playroom when my mom told me to do it in the afternoon, but I chose to put my toys up in the morning because I wanted to put first things first. Awesome, dude. Hi there, what's your name? Deshana. Oh, hi Deshana. Are you going to tell us about a habit? Yes. Which one? Habit number four. What is it? Habit number four is like win-win. If, you, if, if your friend wants to go swing on the swings and you want to go on the monkey bars, you can do what your friend wants to do today, you can do what you want to do tomorrow, or you can go to the, um, or you can do something else together. Cool! Something else together, I like that. Oh, hi there, how are you today? Good. What's your name? Jaden. Jaden. Oh, Jaden, I just learned the fifth habit. And here it is. Seek first to understand, then be understood. Listen before you talk. I, I wonder what that means. 
It means when somebody bumps into you, you don't get mad right away. You um, you wait for them to say sorry. Yeah, because you think they meant to bump into you? They didn't mean to bump into you. Was it was it maybe an accident or something? Yeah, it might be an, been an accident. Might have been an accident, so we should wait, right? That's absolutely right. You're awesome, dude. Hey, dude, what's your name? Parker. Cool, I like the name Parker. Are, are you going to share a habit with us? Yes. Which one? Number six. Number six. What is number six? Synergize together is better. Synergize together is better. I, I'm not sure I know what synergize really means. Can you explain it? Like when you're in a group and <laughs> someone needs help, you can help them out and it makes it faster for you to get done. Yeah, faster and, and easier for them to get a little help, right? Yes. Oh, I like that synergize. Hi there, what's your name? Lily. Oh, I like that Lily. It's like a flower. Mm -hmm. Are you going to share about a habit? Yes. Which one? Habit number seven, sharpen the saw. Ooh, sharpen the saw? What does that mean? Um, you need a balance, so like, if you're doing your homework and you're done, don't do more. Just go outside and play and rest. Well, we all need to, to have a variety of things, work and play, right? Yeah, that makes us strong and healthy. Yeah! Adventures in Murfreesboro! You know, Murph, I'm going to go home and practice those seven habits for success, too. Oh, oh, I hope I can remember them, John. We'll help each other. Yeah, yeah. So, now, what should we do next? Hmm, hey, let's do something different. Since it's fall, let's make a fall craft. Ooh, a fun fall craft. I love fall crafts. What should we make? Hmm, what should we make? Hi, my name is Jonathan. I will show you how to make a leaf box. In the first step, hmm, find a leaf outside or um, cut it out of construction paper. Next, take a, your big leaf and uh, glue it on on the construction paper. Now, take a little, a little leaf and put it on the top of the big leaf to make the fox's ears. Now, take a little leaf and put it at the bottom of your big leaf and it makes the fox's nose. Cut out paper or or get buttons to make the fox's eyes. Now you have a fall leaf fox. Hi, my name is Jada Simone, and I'm gonna teach you how to draw a fall leaf hedge hog. Step one, you're gonna draw you're gonna draw the head. Step two, you're gonna take the little button and stick it on for the nose. Step three, you're gonna take the little black button and stick it on for the eye. Step four, you're gonna either take some leaves from your backyard or some construction paper and glue it on for the rest of the body. That's how you make a fall leaf hedge hog. Oh, that was cool and not hard at all. I know, I can't wait to hang mine up at home. So Murph, are you ready for a story? Oh, what kind of story? Well, it has some of your favorite things in it. Oh, carrots? Are we going to have a story about carrots? No, it's not carrots. But it does have geese and flying and follow the leader. Oh, oh, that sounds like fun. Geese and flying and follow the leader. Geese and flying and follow the leader. Oh, OK, I'm ready. All right, let's listen in. <laughs> the Geese by Perry Phillips. There are some geese that like to spend their winters down on the Stones River, not far from Riverdale High School. They spend their winters here, and when summer comes, they all rise up in the sky and fly to Canada. You see, geese don't like to get too hot or too cold, so they spend their winters here because winters in Canada can get very cold. And they spend their summers in Canada because summers in Tennessee can get very hot. Did you ever wonder how the geese know the way back and forth from Tennessee to Canada and Canada to Tennessee? I mean, after all, do geese have maps? No, they can't read maps. Do they stop at the gas station and ask for directions? No, they can't talk. 
and they don't drive cars. Well then, do they have one of those funny little GPS things attached to their wings? Of course not. We don't understand how the geese know just the right way to fly back and forth from Tennessee to Canada. But twice a year, one bird or another flies up high in the sky, then the whole flock rises up and forms a V behind him, and off they go. Someone always knows the way. They never get lost. Soon the geese will be coming back. I wonder if Jerry Lee will lead them again. You don't know Jerry Lee. He's the young goose that led them here last winter. You see, the geese spent a wonderful summer up on a lake in Canada. They played goose goose duck and fly and seek. But after a while, the nights began to turn cold and they knew it was time to head back south. They were honking and gabbling among themselves, wondering who was going to lead the flock this time. Do you remember the way back to Tennessee? I'm not sure. How about Atlas? He's good at directions. No, Atlas has a touch of bird situs and can't fly point. Jerry Lee heard them gabbling. He was quite young, but he knew the way to Tennessee. He wasn't sure he should say anything, though. Finally, after listening to more gobbledygoose, he spoke up. I know the way to Tennessee, he said. Do you, Jerry Lee? You're awfully young, remarked the others. Jerry Lee stretched himself. He was feeling pretty loose, like a long-necked goose. Yes, he replied. I am young, but I know the way back to Tennessee. Then lead us home, Jerry Lee, said Atlas. So... Jerry Lee flew up high among the clouds. He pointed his head south, and his powerful wings flapped up and down, up and down. The others followed behind in a great V formation. Day after day he flew and led all the geese back, straight and true. The end. But wait, the story is not quite over, for there's a moral, you see. And it's the same moral for us as it was for Jerry Lee. No matter how old or young you may be, you must believe in you, and I must believe in me. The end. Oh, that was a whisker wiggling good story, John. Was it? Yeah. You know, I love stories about animals, and you know, not that I'm biased or anything. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> you know, we've had a great fall show today, Murph. Oh, yeah. We've had the mayor, Mayor Shane McFarland. You were awesome, dude. Yes, he was. And all the kids at Mitchell Nelson Elementary <gasps> with their Leader in Me program. That yeah. was awesome, too. Yeah, I'm going to be a leader one day. Oh, Murph, you're a leader right now. Oh, thanks, dude. You know, so are you. You help lead this show to greatness. That's right. We're both leaders, Murph. Yeah. And you all can be leaders, too. You just have to remember to... Dream big. And work hard. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.